Thank you very much. My warm greeting to our esteemed guests, defense ministers, senior defense officials, and dignitaries from around the world. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the Defense Minister's con con Conclave being held on the sidelines of the 14th edition of this prestigious biennial air show, Air India 2023. I hope that your stay here is pleasant and memorable. The conclave is aptly named Shared Prosperity Through Enhanced Engagements in Defense with the acronym SPEED. Quite rightly so, as this conclave is being held on the sidelines of Aero India with the jets flying by. On a more serious note, the acronym characteristics the era we are living in where geopolitical and security realities are shifting at a hitherto unwitnessed speed. To respond to such fast-paced changes in our world, we have to collaborate in a real time with our friendly partner countries. And this is broadly what the conclave is about. Excellencies, in the past, the place, the pace of change in circumstances was usually very slow and mostly had only a local impact. But today, any major change in the domain of economy, security, health, and climate has global reverberations. When peace and security of any region is threatened, the entire world feels its impact in multiple ways. As I mentioned earlier, we sincerely believe that real-time engagements between nations are necessary considering the increasing pace of the changes all of us are witnessing. Further, in an interconnected and networked world, the rapid transmission of shocks and disturbances around the world makes it impossible to insulate one's own country from the issues of uh, other countries. Regular interactions during summits, conferences, conclaves, etc. ensure that views and concerns of all can be thoroughly discussed and suitably addressed for a common, secure and prosperous future. India has never been a closed country and has been always open to new ideas or thoughts from all over the world. Our past openness continues to shape our present and future. Commingling and contest of various thoughts in India has made us a global ideation center. The ancient Indian ethos guides us to work not only towards cooperation for mutual benefit, but goes a welcome step further from a mere transactional approach to an edifying recognition of all humanity as one family. Untethered to any faction or alliance of one group of nations against another, we have worked sigillously for the uplif upliftment of all nations, developing ones in particular. India has always stood for a rule-based international order in which a primordial instinct of the might being right is replaced by the civilizational concept of fairness, cooperation, respect, and equality amongst all sovereign nations, big or small. History has vindicated our approach time and again. The most recent example is the COVID-19 pandemic which originated in one country, and in no time it had a devastating impact on the whole world. But the global collaboration to counter this pandemic holds so much promise for the future. Dear friends, this recent crisis has once again underscored the point that we are all in the same boat. We either sink or swim together. The shared prosperity of the world requires greater coordination among all nations in diverse areas, of which the domain of defense and security is one of the most important. Excellency, today, collective security has become sine qua non for our development and prosperity. Terrorism, 
illegal arms trade, drugs smuggling, human trafficking, etc., pose significant security threats to the whole world. The security issues I have mentioned are not altogether new, but their scope and scale are unprecedented. Therefore, to counter these threats, there is a need to devise new strategies for our current reality. India doesn't believe in dealing with such security issues in the old paternalistic or the neo-colonial paradigms. We consider all nations as equal partners. That is why we do not believe in imposing external supra-national solutions to a country's international problems. We do not believe in giving sermons or cut and dried solutions which do not respect the national values and constraints of the countries in need of assistance. Rather, we support the capacity building of our partner countries so that they may chart out their own destiny in accordance with their own genius. There are nations which are richer militarily or technologically more advanced than others, but it doesn't give them the right to dictate their solutions to the nations in need of support. Friends, this top-down approach towards solving problems has never been sustainable in the long run. Often, it leads to debt trap, reaction from the local population, conflict, and so on. That is why the focus should be on providing assistance in terms of building up institutions and capacities so that bottom-up solutions can come up originally in consonance with the ethos of the nations being assisted. With the above principle as our lodestar, India offers an enhanced defense partnership to the friendly foreign nations. We offer a partnership that is accommodative of the national priorities and capacities. We want to build with you, you we want to launch with you, we want to create with you, and we want to develop with you. We wish to create symbiotic relationship, which we can learn from each other, grow together, and create a win-win situation for one and all. Friends, as I have mentioned earlier also, it is our endeavor to transcend the hierarchical relationship of buyer and seller to a co-development and co-production model, irrespective of whether we are buyer or a seller. We are a major defense buyer, as well as a significant defense exporter. When we are procuring defense equipment from our valued partner nations, very often they are sharing the technical know-how, setting up manufacturing plants in India, and working with our local firms for various subsystems. And when we are exporting our defense equipment to our friendly nation, we offer our full support towards the capability development of the buyer through sharing of technology, training, co-production, and so on. Aero India provides an opportunity for our aviation and defense industry, including the air, aerospace industry, to showcase its products, technologies, and capabilities to all the national decision makers. I am confident that you would have gained knowledge of the robust defense manufacturing ecosystem being created in India. At the same time, we hope to get to know more about our requirements and expectations from us through your inquiries, comments, feedback, suggestions, etc. This will give us and our industry a significant learning opportunity. And let me assure you, that every query, suggestion, or feedback from our valued partners is taken very seriously. We therefore look forward for your active participation as equal stakeholders in the Aero India 2023. Excellency, I once again extend a warm welcome to you all for this conclave and thank you for joining us here. We look forward to constructive and fruitful discussions. There is an old saying which says that family that eats together stays together. 
a lunch is planned after this session where we all can eat together and pray for staying together in our common quest for shared prosperity. Thank you very much.